Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1314. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, last video, 1313, we saw an array formula to create a sorted unique list in a single cell. Now, this was a huge formula. And below in the comment area, Lori M posted a much shorter formula. Not only that, but Lori also included these two historical notes. The mode.multiple construction we'll see in this formula in this video appears for the first time in the Chandu form challenge number 11. And the n if one technique that we've been using for the last 10 or 20 videos to get indexed to see an array of items in the row number argument, Loriam says that that technique was first shown by Pinny in a Chinese form back in early 2011. Now, actually, in this video, we're going to, of course, create a formula to create a sorted unique list on mixed data. And we're going to see how to list that unique sorted list in a single cell and, more importantly, as a list. A lot of times we have our data and we want a sorted unique list off to the side in a bunch of cells. So we'll see both ways, an actual sorted list in the cells and then in a single cell. Now, the data in this video is a little bit Different than the last video, we have all the sorts of different data, including Booleans and the number 0. We also have an empty cell and a 0 length text string. Now, here's our data. And for many sorting formulas, we want to compare the data to itself. So down here, just to visualize how we're going to do this, I've set up the data as a vertical list and a horizontal list. Another way to think of it as, since we're going to develop a 14 by 14 array that will help us sort the values, these are row headers and column headers. Now, the beauty of this setup is that now I can compare each one of the items in the list to all the other items in the list. And the way we do that is we simply ask the question, hey, the first item, and I'm going to lock it with the F4 key, column lock, but not the rows. Are you greater than or equal to the row header? And I'll hit the F4 key twice. That will ask the question, is this greater than or equal to all the rest for this row? Of course, that's true because they're equal. We can see we get false because Bellin is not greater than or equal to Sue in a sorted list. Bellin is greater than or equal to 1, 2, 3, and so on. I'm going to copy this all the way down. And this will tell us how many items in the list should be equal to or above. Now, we do have a problem with the zero length text string in the empty cell. So I'm going to add a condition here, open parentheses. And I'm going to ask the question, hey, is the item not equal to double quote, double quote? close parentheses times, and then parentheses around this last little bit. That double quote, double quote will pick up both the zero length text string and the empty cell. One. Control Enter. And the multiplication, of course, will give us our ones. Now we can simply add the result for each row. The row with the smallest total will be the item that's sorted to the top of the list. We get two in this row. We get three in this row and so on. Now we need to add the rows. So that's where we use matrix algebra. And we're going to use the mmult function, matrix multiplication. I'm going to take the entire array. And notice there's 14 rows and 14 columns here. And I'm going to multiply it by a very specific array, 14 rows by 1 columns filled with 1s. Now we're allowed to do matrix multiplication because the columns of the first are equal to the rows of the seconds. And the way it works is it will take 1 times each item in this first row and then add them to get a total. The next 1 times the next row and add and get a total. So when I come up here and hit F9, there's our total for each row. There's our 2, which represents the 0. Now, later on in the formula, we'll get rid of those zeros. Control Z, I'm going to enter this here. We're not going to use any of this because we want it all in our formula here. But now we have to simulate all of this up in our formula. No problem. That's easy enough. I'm going to take all the data. And I'm going to ask the question, are you not equal to double quote, double quote, close parentheses? And then we'll simply multiply it 
by the data, are you greater than or equal to? And we need the same data set listed horizontally. So we simply transpose, close parentheses, close parentheses. F9 to evaluate that, that simulated that entire 14 by 14 array. Control Z. Now we need to do matrix multiplication. So MM tab. And you know, when I hit tab, it stole that parentheses. So I have to list the parentheses again. Now we come to the end. Now I need ones listed 14 times vertically. So I'm going to say one raised to the any set of numbers that are listed 14 times. The row function will give us 24 to 37. So one raised to any number, of course, is 1. So when I hit F9, there's our array of 1s. That little formula will tell us when I close parentheses in F9, how many items in the list should be equal to or above me. The one with the least will be sorted to the top. The next smallest will be second in the list. And then 5 will be third, and so on. Now, what I'm really interested in is, yes, I know that 0 is 2, and that'll sort to the top. But when I'm extracting these items, I'm really going to need the relative position of that 2, the relative position of that 3. So if I were to look up the number 2 using the match function, the relative position would be 7. And that would be the position of the 0 I need to extract first. That 3, that's in relative position 5, right? So I would need to know that that's in relative position 5. Now, no problem. I can use the match function. But notice, I'm going to take an array of 1 to 14 inside the match function and look it up in this array. There's no number 1 in this array, so I'll get an NA. But it will find 2 and report it as the seventh position. So you ready? Control Z match function, and then lookup value. I'm actually going to type a comma. I need an array of 1 to 14. So I say, hey, the row of 24 to 37, that will give us way too many. So I'm going to subtract. And in this case, I'm going to assume that the field name at the top or column header will always be attached to the data set. That way, I can get 24 minus 23, which is 1, 25 minus 23, which is 2 close parentheses. If I click lookup value in F9, there's my array of 1 to 14. For 1, match will try and find a relative position. That'll be an A. That'll be 7. That'll be 5, and so on. Now I come to the end, comma. I need 0 for exact match, close parentheses. Now F9, there's my array of NAs and relative position. 7 represents 0, 5 represents 1, 3 represents 1, 2, 3, and so on. Now, in this cell, I want to count the unique items from this list here. So notice I have NAs and numbers with no repeat. So I'm simply going to Control Z and wrap the count function to count. Count will ignore the errors, but count the numbers. So when I Control Shift Enter, there's my unique count. Now I'm going to take the contents of this, Control C, and build our formula to extract a sorted unique list, equal sign and Control V. Now if we look at this, I need, as I copy the formula down, to pull out the seventh item, then the fifth item. So these are going to be relative positions. Now I actually need to get rid of the NAs and have simply a list that simply shows the relative position 7, 5, 3, and so on. Control Z. Hey, I'm going to get rid of those NAs by using a great function that came out in Excel 2013, if NA. I come to the end, comma, and double quote, double quote. So the if NA will show zero length text string when it encounters an NA. When I, if I hit F9, there are the zero length text strings instead of the NAs. Now I need to get rid of the zero length text strings. And this is where the mode.multiple function comes in. Now the mode calculation finds the item that occurs most frequently. But if there's a unique list, mode will return nothing but errors. So watch this, Control Z. I'm going to come inside of the match function. Notice there's a 0 that says exact match. I'm going to put an array constant with two zeros in it. 
this is absolutely crazy. I've never seen anything like this. An array constant for two zeros, that means it will show two exact matches for each number. It will be 7, 7, 5, 5, and so on. If inside of the NA I click here and hit F9, you've got to be kidding me, 7, 7, 5, 5, 3, 3. Now that there's duplicates, the mode can do its thing. Every number is listed twice. That means every number is a mode. So when we wrap the mode, it will deliver every single number a single time. Control Z. Now, remember, if NA replaces those NAs with text, and the mode function, like so many of the aggregate functions, are programmed to ignore text. So watch this. When I do mode.multiple and F9, there's my list of relative positions with no NAs and no zero length text strings. Now, from this, I need to extract as I copy the formula down. I want the first one, then the second one, then the third one. So I can simply Control Z, use index to extract. And in the row number, comma, right here, we're going to need a formula element that gives me 1, 2, 3 as I copy down. That's where the rows function comes in. I'm sitting in cell C27. So C dollar sign 27, lock the first cell reference, but not the second. That way, it's an expandable range, and rows will count the rows 1, 2, 3, 4 as I copy the formula down. Close parentheses. And I'm going to have to enter this with Control Shift Seven. and Enter. Copy this down. Oops. F2, I forgot to lock that sour reference. F4, Control Shift Seven. Enter. Double click and send it down. There are the relative positions in the perfect order. The seventh item, the fifth item, the third item. Now I can put this inside of index and extract the actual data items. There's the data we want to extract, comma. There's that huge row number, which just is going to give me the right relative position as I copy the formula down. Control Shift Enter. Double click and send it down. That is absolutely amazing. Now, we need to get rid of the errors. We do not want to come up here and use if error. Anytime you have a big array formula that's extracting data, if there's an alternative logical test, you want to use it. If, and the logical test we'll use is we'll say if the rows, I'm going to come over here, if the rows are greater than our count. F4, if that's true, which means past row 8, then the value of true is double quote, double quote, show nothing. Otherwise, run the formula. Close parentheses, Control Shift Enter, double click and send it down. And the reason that this is so nice as compared to if error is the formula only runs the logical test, which is simple. Once it gets past row 8, it is Dumping this in, it is not running that whole formula. It's running only the formula for the unique items, escape. Now, for a single cell, we're actually going to come all the way back in and get just the match and mamult, Control-C. Come over here, equal sign, Control-V. If I F9, we don't want the double sevens, double fives, so I'm going to Control-Z and get rid of this. We just want a single relative position and an NA. Now those relative positions I need simultaneously to extract all the items. So watch this. I'm going to use index and put the data in there, comma. And as we learned in many of the earlier videos, index can't see this array of values for the row numbers or relative positions. So we'll use our n, if, one, comma. And that forces index to see the entire array, close parentheses, close parentheses, close parentheses. If I F9, there is the sorted list 0, 1, 123, Bellin, and so on. The NAs, we'll get rid of those. Control Z, we'll just wrap if NA around that. And then at the end, put comma, double quote, double quote, close parentheses. And watch this, when I hit F9, now there's a sorted list with a bunch of zero length text strings, or the formula will consider those empty cells. So now, Control-Z, we just put it inside of 
text join. Now, text join is a brand new function in 2016 that allows us to put a delimiter in double quotes, comma, and then the second argument. We ignore empty cells. We can put true, we can put one, or we can leave it omitted, and it will ignore those empty cells. Close parentheses, Control, Zero, Shift, and one, Enter. One. There is our sorted list of mixed data. If I come over here and change this to something like a, not even a letter number or a number, five, number five. look at that. It sorts just as if we had hit the Sort button. Control Z. That is pretty amazing. Single cell formula. Formula to extract it into a list in the cell. There's our unique count formula. Man, it's awesome hanging out on our online Excel team. Thanks to Lori M. We'll see you next video.